All right, guys, so I'm back here, and one thing I did want to show you, and I, I should have pointed this out, was that uh, right, right here are the update firmware and the disconnect and connect. So if I click disconnect, you're going to see these. Now, when I, put, when I put my picture over there, you won't see those, right? So it's going to look just like this. So just pay notice to the fact that um, I will try to keep that out of the way, but if you see me covering it, right over there are the two things, update firmware and connect. So if I say click the update firmware button and I happen to have a picture over that, just know that it's that button right there. And if I say, okay, let's click connect, just know that it's the connect button right there. Okay, so with that said, now what we want to do is let's go through some simple commands real quickly in our flight controller, and then we're going to go do a firmware update, and I'm going to show you what files you might need for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to click connect, which remember is hidden right behind me. So we're going to click connect, and we can, again, we can pick up our flight controller, we can pick up our, our, our drone, and we can see that when we move it, it's moving on the screen, right? We want to check the firmware first. The main, main thing is we want to program the firmware before we do anything else. Let's go ahead and update the board. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll all the way down here on the left-hand side, and you're going to find this last option called C. CLI. Click that. And then what I want you to do is I want you to take your keyboard and I want you to type in the word version. When you do that, what you're going to see is it's going to tell you JGF 405 or if you're in this particular video for this board, that's what it says. And it tells you the version right here, 4.2.10. So what you can do on your computer is you can right click on your start button, left click on run, and where it says open, just type the word notepad unless you have a pad of paper and a pen. And if you want to do that, that's fine. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just basically going to highlight all these things, right click on them, left click on copy, and come over here and paste it. And this is going to be my notes. All right, so I, I'll save this so that I can reference something in the future. And you'll see how we, we may need to do that in the future when we're doing like um, some upgrades and we need to keep track of our firmware. So I'm going to leave my notes right here. I'll minimize it now. All right, now what we're going to do next is, and again, I'll move my picture out of the way for this. Uh, I'll put it in the bottom left corner here. Let's try that. Let me make it easier. Okay, I'm way down here. All right, what you want to do now is you want to go ahead and click uh, Update Firmware. Okay. Wait for your COM port to come back up. And now let's look at our notepad again or wherever you wrote it down. Remember, we're looking for the JGF 405, and we're going to look for anything newer than this, or even if it is that, it's, it, it's, we're going to do a fresh load basically. So let's. J-H-E-F, you can drop this down, you can scroll. I had already selected it before, so it's my first one here. And you can see that the new version is 4.2.11, okay? There are unstable release options. We're not gonna do that, so please make sure that you do not have that on. The rest of the options need to be just like this. No, boot, no reboot sequence, full chip erase, manual baud rate, so off, on, off. 4.2.11, come over here, click load firmware online and then click flash firmware, okay? Now, this is where some of you may also have some errors, okay? You may get to where uh, the system hangs just like it is doing right now. You may get to where it doesn't even find DFU mode up here on the ports, okay? So I'm gonna show you what happens if it doesn't find DFU mode on the ports. So let's go back to our device manager and we're gonna see something called STM32 right here bootloader. I'm gonna highlight this and you're not gonna delete yours, okay? I'm just gonna show you if you have this error, you're gonna understand what happens next. I'm gonna right click on this and left click on uninstall device and I'm gonna delete the driver because I want you to see what you do to fix the next error because this really stumps a lot of people, all right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another scan, okay? And you see how we're in this, we have this STM32 bootloader now. So watch what happens. If I was to disconnect, and I'm gonna do this here, one second, there we go, just like that. If I am to disconnect my drone now, right? Disconnect my flight controller, okay? And I plug it back in. You should see it right here on the STM electronics, okay? Now, what, when I go to my beta flight, and I tell it I want to flash the firmware, okay? It can't, it doesn't know what to do. You see how it's gone now? My COM port's gone. And if I go to my, if I go to my um, device manager, this STM32 bootloader, it's, it's, it doesn't have the right drivers to load. This is where the next program uh, comes in that we need, okay? So what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go back to our, um, 
website right here and we're going to download the next program that we need to fix that problem and that's going to be this Zadig USB, USB. So click on that link and you're going to get to the screen right here and just click on the newest version Zadig 2.7 and don't do anything with this you can just I don't know what they I guess we'll just click close these are the advertisements that they get paid for all right so Zadig is right here now it just downloaded and again now my screen is in the wrong spot so bear with me I'll move this up here and you can see right here I've got the download sitting in the bottom left I'm gonna click on that it's gonna prompt me do I want it to make changes I'm gonna click yes all right now we're at this main screen now you see how we have our device sitting right here it automatically knew to find it if yours doesn't show up click on options click on list all devices and just make sure you select STM32 bootloader if it does show up automatically great you're 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 good to go okay so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and update the driver so once this is selected we're going to click install driver and just wait a minute just give it a minute it'll look like nothing's happening but it's then there you go you can see it just kick in automatically okay so just make sure it sits there a second now if you want to watch your device manager you can have that running in the background over here and what's happening is it's loading the drivers now so in DFU mode which is the mode where you're basically getting ready you're in bootloader mode you're ready to write firmware to it it'll be able to be detected in beta flight if you don't have this people who you can usually use your flight controller but when you try to update it it's gonna fail so this is the this is the workaround for that okay so we're gonna give it a second it can take a little while I'm just looking back here at the driver because you can see it doesn't even show it up here We'll let this keep running a second. Okay, so now it's starting to update. And what you're going to see is it should drop down to the bottom we should be able to go all the way down here to USB and it should make a second arrow there should be a USB device there should be another one that's gonna pop up right here and that's where you're gonna find this STM32 bootloader so give it a second because you can see the first one doesn't have anything in it we're looking for STM32 bootloader when it's detected under as a USB serial device okay so give it a second and you'll start seeing some changes take place Look at that, there we go. Okay, and now if you look at Betaflight, it automatically put us back up there. <coughs> All right, now we can't do anything, we just have to wait. This is gonna get done in just a minute, so just give it a second here. It won't take five minutes, but this is taking a little bit longer than I'm used to, but there's a good chance that me messing around with my computer and deleting programs that are, and just putting them right back on, this could be causing a little bit of the issue, so just hang tight, we'll get this done slowly. Yours may be done already. Unfortunately, mine's not for whatever reason, so we're just gonna give it a little bit of time. But we do know that the driver's loaded because we can see it in Betaflight right here. Thing is giving me messages. I don't know why. But we'll just let it keep running. Usually doesn't take that long. You can fast forward till it's done, I guess, um, because as long as we're at this point, uh, I'm just now it's just a formality of waiting for this program to finish loading oh go there of course so it's done now i can click close click the x and as you can see now in beta flight we're ready to go 
So I've downloaded the firmware and now I'm gonna click flash firmware, okay? And look at it, it's starting to do the erasing. And then it's gonna start writing the data to it. So give it a second for that too. And you're gonna be good to go. Then all we're gonna do is we're gonna log back into Betaflight, verify that our version is 4.2.11. And at that point, we're done with this video. And now we're gonna to get to the programming side. It'll be very easy and it'll, it'll go pretty quickly. So pay attention because we still have to download the ESC software as well. So hang tight a second and we'll get to that too. Let's just let this uh, get done updating real quick. All right, this is the last part. It goes pretty quickly. Excellent. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the focus back on the drone itself. So let's go ahead and bring that over. All right, so what you wanna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the drone and I wanna turn it. I want you to turn the drone so that when it's, um, when it's on the bench, it's facing away from you so that the front, now my cable's gotta stretch pretty far for this, but you want the drone always facing away from you. Front is away from you, the back is towards you, just like this, okay? Now we're gonna check our, our firmware, make sure it did it, but wait, because there may be some messages that pop up when we look at this, so hang tight. We're gonna click connect, and you see right here it says notice, and then it tells you all these things about custom defaults. Just go ahead and click apply custom defaults. It's gonna reboot the board one more time. You'll see your COM port here, so make sure you see this, click connect. Now let's look at these warnings. It says the warning, the problems, there's the following problem. There's no motor output protocol. We'll fix that, and that's just talking about D shot, one, one shot, um, a D shot 600 D -shot, and, and so forth and I'll show you those uh, okay so it says you need to do that the accelerometer is enabled but not calibrated we're gonna handle that right now so let's just go ahead and click close first thing we're gonna do is uh, calibrate the accelerometer so with your drone sitting directly in front of you but facing opposite go ahead and click reset z-axis and then click calibrate accelerometer okay and that's gonna bring it to level and you can see now all these are zeros Yours should be very close to this okay the next error that we had was motor protocol. Now we're gonna go over that later as far as what it means, but for right now, let's just set it so you don't see these errors anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and go down to uh, motors. And we are going to, right here, ESC motor features. Let's just go ahead and drop this down. And we're gonna put it to one shot, one, two, five. And we're gonna leave everything else just like it is. And we're gonna click save and reboot. Now make sure you've got this back up here and click connect. See how there's no more errors now? Now what we wanna do is let's go ahead and check our, the version of our firmware real quick, okay? So let's click our CLI. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to that text box right there and we're gonna type version, hit enter, and there you go. Now you can see version 4.2.11 in place of what you used to have. Whoops, let me go over here, sorry. Let me go over here because I was gonna paste it. So I just wanna paste this on the screen. And that keeps track of my notes, where we were and where we're at, okay? And that is all we needed. So go ahead and click disconnect, and get back to your Betaflight screen just like this. That does it for loading your uh, DFU driver. Make sure the right driver is loaded and getting your firmware flashed. Now we'll come back and go over the Betaflight programming. We'll be back in one second.